So our project is on the isolation and characterization of bacteriophage. Um, and these are a type of virus. Uh, and prior to our in project, just the beginning of our project, I had never heard of these things called bacteriophage. So to begin with, we did have to do quite a bit of theory um, uh, to look at what these things were and how they worked. So bacteriophage is a virus uh, which um, infects bacterium uh, and reproduces inside it. And um, the process of their replication um, uh, affects, has the effect of killing the uh, bacteria, the host bacteria. So as you can see here, we have a picture of a bacterium. Um, and all of the white specks on the outside are, are bacteriophage. Um, and so there are binders uh, on the bacteriophage which bind to receptors on the um, bacterium surface. So bacteriophage are, what I've, from what I've seen, considered one of, if not the most abundant thing on Earth. There's 10 to the 31 of them, uh, based on the assumption that there are 10 to the 30 bacteria. Um, and they play key roles in driving the evolution of bacteria itself, so it's almost a bit of a um, biological arms race um, as the bacteria develop a uh, defence against the bacteriophage, the bacteriophage uh, find a way around it. So the process of replication uh, for bacteriophage is the lytic and lytic lysogenic cycle. Um, so the lytic cycle is uh, the bacteriophage binding to the receptors on the um, bacteria surface, injecting its DNA, um, and then the proteins uh, are produced inside the uh, bacteria. And these proteins then get packed into coats. Uh, the protein, um, the ge oh, sorry, the genome replicates, which is then packed into the protein coats, um, becoming virions. Um, and the buildup of these virions causes cell lysis. Uh, the other process, the lysogenic uh, cycle, um, again starts with the binding and the insertion of the DNA, uh, but this time the genome is integrated into the host's genome, um, and this viral genome is replicated alongside uh, the host's genome, uh, and this genome is passed on to daughter cells of the bacteria. Um, and the detachment of this viral genome from the host genome uh, sort of starts the process of the lytic cycle, um, and so the virions build up and causes cell lysis, killing off the, the uh, bacteria. So our project, um, we've been doing it for uh, just over a year now. Um, and this is the process that we've been going through. So we've um, used collected river, uh, samples of river water from the river cam um, and enriched the phage in there. Uh, so that we've got enough to use. Um, isolated our plaques, um, each plaque coming from a single phage, uh, and purified them. Uh, and we have now, uh, last year we hadn't extract when we came, we hadn't extracted the DNA. Um, we've now done that, um, and we've had that sequenced. Um, we're still waiting on the, uh, to go in to do the electron microsp microscopy at the University of Cambridge. Um, and personally, myself, I have now started on the bioinformatics side of things. So the bacteria we've been using is E. coli. Um, it's a non-pathogenic strain. Um, and yeah. So the enrichment allows us to get a more concentrated sample of the phages. Um, this means that we've got enough that we can use. Um, which means that we can uh, actually get them out and uh, find an individual phage. Um, so this is our enrichment protocol. So we've got five mil of the sample, um, five mil of the two times LB, and uh, 500 microliters of the bacteria. Um, and this um, enrichment we then do serial dilutions with um, to make sure that we have enough. Uh, these samples then get plated out um, with top agar um, and wait for it to set and um, you can see the plaques begin to form um, on the agar where it's um, where the bacteriophage have started to kill off the E. coli. So the I've gone past one. Yeah. 
Um, the you can see uh, at the um, on the left hand side. Uh, this is before the process of purification, um, so it's, everything's a little bit slightly messier. On the right, it's after the process of purification, so we've got more individual plaques that we can use. Um, so again, the clear agar is what we want because it contains the, the phage, um, and this agar is put into the buffer uh, where the phage diffuses out, and this whole process is, and then it's plated out again, and the whole process is replicated three times to make sure that we've got a pure uh, sample of phage. Um, and then we replicate this on a slightly larger scale to obtain a higher concentration of the phage that we can use for the DNA extraction. Um, so this is something that we haven't got onto yet. Um, it's something that we are uh, looking forward to do towards the end of this summer uh, at Cambridge University. Um, uh, we're hoping to get a high enough concentration that we can look at the bacteriophage to determine the structure um, because looking at the sequences um, we've already aware that there is uh, some interesting things going on. Um, so this bit we have done, we have we did spend a day at the university uh, extracting the DNA from our, our samples um, which we then sent off to, uh, I believe it was Bristol, to be sequenced. Um, which took rather a long time. <laughs> so the results of our sequencing, uh, we came back and it was put into the Artemis program. Um, and all of the blue boxes that you can see are proteins. Uh, and this is what we've been uh, looking at and particularly interested in because we can compare these proteins to proteins that occur in other phage that have already been uh, discovered. Um, and if you look on the right uh, hand side, this is a screenshot taken from some of the work that I've done uh, where you're protein blasting uh, the proteins that we found in our sample and um, it shows you the, uh, the percentage uh, similarity to other proteins. Um, so for example, you can see the top one is uh, there's a shigellophage protein uh, where there's a 100% uh, similarity match. Um, and this sort of goes on to a side, sort of side project that I've been doing um, where I was interested in uh, what the shigella phage was because it kept occurring in a lot of the proteins. There were a lot of other proteins in the shigella phage that were very similar. Um, and so I started to look into uh, what shigella was and um, actually looking at the symptoms for an E. coli infection and a shigella infection, um, they're almost identical symptoms. Um, so my sort of side project is actually looking at um, how, uh, uh, whether it is that these two bacteria have actually come from a common ancestor. Um, so I'd like to acknowledge the Wellcome Trust who have given us this opportunity. Um, without them, we've never been able to do this, and um, I think it's completely changed where I'm looking to go in the future. And, of course, the University of Cambridge to Dr Mark Harrington uh, who has been our guide and mentor throughout the whole, whole process. So what was that, what was special about the Cam River that you went to the Cam? Um, so Given the abundance of bacteriophage, um, they can be found almost anywhere. They've been found in food, uh, in jet fuel, in um, soil, and uh, I think the reason we chose the ri river water from the River Cam is it's, it's there, we can easily access it, but it's also probably the easiest way of getting the phage out. Any questions right back here, Julian? Um, well done, by the way, for standing up on your own. That's very impressive. Um, although I'm all in favour of basic research, which, which in many ways this is, why should we perhaps be interested in bacteriophages? Um, so recently, uh, about, must be about four months ago, in the news there was a big thing about the uh, build-up of antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Um, and phage therapy, which is something that's already being used in places like Georgia, Poland and Russia, for example, is being looked at as an alternative treatment um, for bacterial infections. Just 
positive mix, positive uh, well, for failure of national infection control and bizarre infection. A question here? Yeah. Yeah. Mike, yeah. Does your uh, purification stage also work as a kind of a selection? Are, are you reducing the, the variety of phage that you've got there? Yeah. And are you doing anything to monitor the variety that you've got? Um, so we have several different samples, um, and the purification stage is purely to make sure that we have one sample that we can then separate out um, from all of the other ones on the plates. From, from your initial plate, then, would you aim just to purify one particular phage, yeah. or would you aim to try and keep so the variety of phage that are present? We'd aim to select one, one phage, um, which we can then use. We still have plenty of time, unfortunately. <laughs> Any more questions? Are we done? Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, one there. <laughs> uh, are you planning to look at any other bacteria? Yep, so we've got a, a new cohort of Year 12s who are all sat down, and I am very envious of them. Um, <laughs> and so the Year 13s, we're now handing over the reins to the Year 12s, so they're going to start more on the practical side of things to get some more uh, bacteriophage samples, and the Year 13s, um, with all our exams and bits of coursework coming up, we are looking more at the bioinformatics side of things now.